the ferry to the wall is simple electrical it is power supply using electrical components and there are electronics and uh, you know how it turned out just go over the specs pretty quick uh, turned out to be quite useful so it gives me four voltages from 12 to 96 volts uh, around 50 milliamps like 4 to 12 volt which is around half an amp it's current limited short circuit proof and i stuck a beautiful little meter so it looks pretty sexy the concept is actually quite simple uh, what happens is if you input an AC voltage, let's say 120 volts, across uh, three capacitors of equal value, you break the voltage down into 40, 80, 120 volts. So I set this test uh, thing in a voltmeter across the gel unit, and you can see the maximum current is essentially dependent on the capacitance. So 2.2 microfarad gives me approximately around 40 milliamperes. So it worked, it pushed the DNA through the gel, and you can see on the breadboard on the la left, the three capacitors. So like I said before, a 41 milliampere uh, thing would give me that. So I thought I could increase the capacitance and potentially increase the current. So the concept uh, quite surprisingly worked quite reliably. So then decided to kind of go ahead with a circuit. My first choice was to keep it simple which is the circuit I'm showing here. So instead of three, I thought I'd do four capacitance, I'd get 24 to like 100 volts, so a few a little more resolution. I'd need a power switch and every other thing there, right? The challenge is unsafe because if someone touches the buffer, you kind of might get a shock. So I added an isolation transformer and I couldn't find one cheap enough or good enough. So I just put two back-to-back -back transformers at 12 volt to 12 volt. So, okay, at the concept down, so I gathered the parts together, built a wooden enclosure, six by six by three inches made of plywood, painted with acrylic. The enclosure is essentially a C-shaped side panel, a front panel, a back panel, and another side panel, which you can see here. The so-called electronic slash electric components are all shown here. The capacitors were bought from eBay, they 0.22 microfarad, they X2, that means they can withstand AC voltage and survive it for a while. And on the left is switches, sockets, neon indicators, an old VU meter, and a bridge rectifier. Seam set. The isolation transformer, the biggest difference here was I had to use a 120 volt 12 to 12 volt transformers, which I got from IKEA LAN bases, which I'd not used, I think, for just a decade or so. They're pretty good specs. Output of 12 volts AC at around 800 milliamperes, so would definitely work for this application. Uh, so now I had the parts together, decided to stuff the back panel, which is just two components, the IEC socket and a fuse holder. I had to in, kind of increase the or insert the hole for the fuse holder because otherwise I could not attach the screw, which you can just see here. Once I had these components in, the IEC socket and the fuse holder, I wired it in with around six inch lead wires. So the fuse uh, will go to the uh, power switch. The neutral, which is the bottom, will go to the power switch, and the live is connected to the fuse. Simple wiring here. Uh, once this was done, uh, I also had an earth wire, so I forgot to mention that it's coming up from the middle. This would be attached to the transformer frames to kind of provide a good grounding. I attached the back panel to the C -E part of the enclosure, and now it was time to move on to the front panel. So this had banana plugs, which would output the voltage for electrophoresis, uh, which I attach uh, hand tightened and just a little bit of uh, pressure. So this was held well. I had ap applied the labels and printed it on, but then moved on to the power switch. Again, this needed a bit of an inset so the power switch would fit. And, uh, and this was a problematic power switch that I'll talk about later. Then I had a recycled neon power indicator, which did have a resistor inside its body. So I put that in. Uh, again, remember retro. I had to drill a new hole for my meter switch. I could switch to two currents, 50 and 500. And you can see that here. Again, an old uh, recycled switch with its old wiring and resistor there. Finally, the voltage selection switch, which was a two pole six way. And I think I used five of the uh, six position. You can see it's all kind of nicely neatly in place. Then it was time to move on to the milliamp meter. That's a big hunk, so I thought I would get that out of the way. I had old VU meters, uh, so I thought I would remove the blue uh, meter face that you see there. Uh, and I took a photograph of the meter face with a ruler next to it. 
imported it into a drawing program and scaled it to the right size a ruler help and then drew the face on top of it printed it out glued it to the blue face and you can see here the finished product so 0 to 50 milliamperes the other faces you see in the background are 0 to 10 and all of are for future projects so just keep tuned in for that uh, it worked out well i'm surprised how cute the meters looks i glued the meters in and you can see the meter switch just below it in, in the red and the re rectifier had already kind of pre-wired. So for the meter to read uh, 50 milliamperes, I would need a, a resistance shunt, a shunt. And this one, uh, the meter was 0 0.5 milliampere full scale diffraction, uh, full scale deflection. So a uh, four ohm shunt, 3.2 to 0 0.6 ohm. I added those two resistors that you see on the top, it produced four ohm. And to get to 500, I would need around another 0.4 ohm so that was the big resistor in the previous one started wiring it the brown wire on the meter negative goes to the banana positive made a mistake the center of the, of the switch actually does not go to the negative but it goes to the positive terminal of the switch which is on the right you can see in the wiring diagram here so the negative is on the bottom of the meter and that is where it should uh, the, but the center of the switch is on the top goes to the top the positive and to the bridge rectifier so that to trim this wire and then connect clip the correct wires to you know the place and here sorry it's a little off of skew but uh, the correct wiring has been done so the center now goes to the positive of the terminal like shown here so the top of the meter the positive it goes to the bridge rectifier and the center of the switch and now i have to move on to the voltage selector switch so this is the circuit again and you can see there are two sides of the switch uh, one and two and nothing the right are connected to the capacitor bank and the left all in one. So the left is the switch I started with. So I connected terminals, uh, uh, I think one to five all together and then just attached brown wires around five or six inches long to the other terminals based on that uh, circuit diagram that I showed you before. A close up. So I used a kind of pinch clamp as a heat sink because this was plastic fragile, which I was afraid of melting the plastic. Then now it's time to move on to the capacitors and the transformers. So the capacitor from eBay, they're stack of two and plus four in uh, this way, so they're in parallel and, and then in series. So I put a one meg ohm resistor from the top lead to the last lead of the capacitor. This would help drain the capacitor when power was shut off. And each junction of the capacitor was connected to a specific pin on the voltage selection switch, you know, that I pre-wired in the previous section. So once this was done, I glued the capacitor down and then I attached a 120 ohm resistor to the topmost capacitor. This would be fed by 120 volts uh, from the transform uh, transformer, which would feed, I guess, 120 ohm, 120 volt. Yeah, interesting, yeah. Uh, now, one of the free wires is uh, one of the free wires. So the two wires that you see in the frame, one is from the power resistor and others on the bottom of the capacitor. Connecting the transformers was actually kind of a big headache. So just to immobilize, I guess, the transformers, I glued them to a little piece of plywood and rubber banded it together so they wouldn't slide around like crazy. Now we have placed the transformers on the bottom of the enclosure. Uh, and you can just about see the earth wire coming to the center of one of the transformers. It goes all the way to the second transformer. It was soldered and then, then covered with uh, the thing. The 12 volt output, which are the two wires in the middle, will be uh, connected to the voltage selector switch. I think you can just about barely see it. It's pretty impossible to see it on all the mess here, but followed the circuit diagram quite accurately. The 120 volt output, which is on the bottom of this picture, was connected to the bottom of the capacitor and you can here see the close-up it's a bird's nest right i mean the taping helped a bit clear the mess up checked and really double checked the wiring for shorts and correct connections and fortunately didn't find any major errors so the big headache was when i powered it up i couldn't get power through and i kind of figured out it was a defective switch from ebay which had stopped working so had to remove it in spite of you know all the mess i removed the front panel snipped the uh, power switch off and you can see the red on the top is the uh, wires that come from the fuse and the iec socket this is the ac input in and the brownish wires pointing towards you the two are 
uh, from the 120 volt transformer input so this is what would feed 120 volts to the transformer and of course the defective switch on the left which i dumped uh, and just to kind of took a quick video it got worse when i removed it right and the switch i couldn't even flip the toggle on the switch either the inside springs or something had gone wrong so i had more of the same kind of sw switch but i decided just to use something more robust and this was a push button switch the diameter of this was larger than the original so i reamed the hole a bit larger and then uh, wire splice some wires in and then connected them to the original wires of the of the power switch and put that power switch back into the enclosure and then put the front panel back on it's screwed on here so now it's ready for testing so looks kind of decent and i'm actually surprised how quickly the whole thing went in spite of the power supply so i connected the power supply to my diy gel box a separate instructable with the buffer turned it on and you can see the 12 volt uh, uh, kind of thing there and then 24 volt approximately 24 you can see the current increasing and then it went to 48 and 72 uh, at uh, the so-called 92 96 volts i was only getting 88 volts maybe i think the current was being to start limited and then of course i'm flipping the voltages down just to confirm and the switch and everything is kind of the same as when i went up and down so looks it worked uh, seemed to be working quite well check the meter switch and you can see if i switch from one to the other the milliamp meter goes down by 10x and that's it guys